Okay, Paso YouTube, Archman here, and uh, I just kind of wanted to do a little update on the Impinda, Chris Reeve Dives Impinda. So uh, most of you guys who are going to watch this video have probably been chiming in on my just uh, progress and process <clears throat> over this knife, and uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch touch on just a couple of uh findings you know kind of a, a probably like a reverse honeymoon kind of deal i like this kind of video personally because i don't know i kind of like to see how <clears throat> things develop and how people kind of get a feel for the tools uh, that i'm interested in knives uh, i watch a lot of this type of video myself uh just being a carpenter I watch a shit ton of tool reviews. Um, I've been thinking about posting a shit ton of tool reviews because I have a shit ton of tools, um, but uh, I haven't gotten really around to it. It's just kind of <clears throat> EDC stuff. I guess I'm a little bit more uh, passionate about, if you will. But um, yeah, the truth is, uh, so yeah, this, this Impinda, I have, you know, it's I, I, it's not like I had to painstakingly make myself EDC this knife. I'm gener generally interested in um, getting to know the the EDC items that I acquire, and um, this is no different. You know, even though it's a little bit of a letdown uh, as far as uh, <clears throat> how things have kind of gone with it. I, you know, I, I, I like I've kind of said in the past videos, I'm I'm interested in what this thing is, you know? So I, uh, yeah, I've just kind of been interested in seeing how I feel about what I do know about it instead of just kind of speculating <clears throat> on the unknowns. Uh, but yeah, uh, suffice it to say it's, it is a real like reverse honeymoon, you know, like, so it's, it really is like, the more that I've gotten to know this knife, the more I have appreciated things about it. The more I have, um, it's grown on me, you know, the more it's broken in. It's kind of funny. I, I, <clears throat> I haven't lubricated it in a few days. Um, and I was uh, watching a show, The Good Place. Um, I don't know if you guys watched that with my wife. Um, this evening, um, she's, she just went to bed to go read. Um, and I was almost, I almost lubricated the pivot, but then I was like, you know, I'm thinking about doing a video tonight, so I'm just going to not lube the pivot. Um, just because I'm not, even though I have like fancy, uh, tools and stuff, like I'm not, I don't want to have tools that I have to baby all that much, you know, like an EDC knife for me. Fuck, man, like, there's plenty of knives out there that, like, I mean, shit, you know. Most people who ever end up watching this video, you know, your first few knives that you had as a kid, fuck, man, you didn't even know you had to sharpen it. Or as a young adult or a current in your life or whatever, you didn't even know you had to sharpen the knife, much less lubricate it, you know, like, you just used it. So, same thing, like, I, I that's what I want in a knife, you know, and especially, like, something that is supposed to pass as an everyday carry. I don't want any, like, bullshit, you know. I wonder what that artifact is. Hold on, I'm just going to smudge my camera real quick just in case whatever that weird thing is over here. I'm going to get a decent camera here eventually, so I just have to figure out how to integrate everything into just making it work. But uh, I'm just going to set this on the surface right here real quick and i'm gonna pour myself a beer i actually have in case this goes long i don't think it will but i have an upslope citra up citra pale ale um and then i also have a pacifico on deck so I, I don't know maybe you guys should tell me i so when i'm watching this video it's everything's backwards um but i don't know if you watch it live if it's backwards and it, and it flips around later because that these videos take like fucking like 15 hours on youtube before um i can even see them after i do the live uh version um but yeah <clears throat> just with the impinda it, it's been it's been great you know all things considered 
Uh, the one thing that, I, and I'll brush on this uh, at some point, I'm sure in this video, the the real only, I, I kind of have like a good and bad, you know, aspect list. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the one main thing that like you just can't get around and, and anybody who does a video on a high end slip joint like this is like, hey, there's no guarantee that a slip joint is for you, you know, because uh, it's normal, it's not reverse. All right, cool. Um, so there's no guarantee that a slip joint is for you. A lot of times people will review like this knife or like I said, a high end slip joint and they're just like, hey, buy uh, a case knife or buy a what whatever, just to make sure that a slip joint is indeed something that you're gonna be able to live with. But for me, that doesn't really work because I don't fucking want a jig bone handle knife. You know, I don't like the traditional materials. I don't like, I mean, there's almost nothing about like a traditional, I actually have a boker um, kind of traditional knife. I just don't like it. It's not my shit, you know, for whatever reason, I just like the man-made materials. I like G10 carbon fiber, titanium, stainless steels, um, all that kind of stuff is, is that's, that's my shit. You know, that's just, uh, so it's, so it doesn't really work out for me, like, cause, cause, and I'm a design geek too. So like, it, it's not going to help me to buy a hinder or slippy, uh, to try to figure out if I'm going to like a Chris Reeve knives and Pinda. So it's just not, it's not in the cards for me. I have to actually get that knife. And also like I brushed on too, in previous videos, if I was one of you guys watching this asshole on fucking YouTube, I I still take it, but with a very much with a grain of salt. And I'm always trying to interpret things. Well, how would I feel about that? And how would I, you know, so I still kind of have to get it in my hands personally. So it's all a moot point. But um, yeah, I'll just kind of go over um, good and bad. And to be honest, man, like the, the vast majority of the good versus bad that I've kind of come up with for this knife, uh, <clears throat> the good far outweighs the bad all things considered. Um, there's some little tweaks and I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck man, that's a missed opportunity, you know, like uh, on Chris Reed and I's part. Um, and, and there are things that I just feel like, I'm just like, I can't believe they chose that with like, you know, pull, going forward with like major production costs and uh, preliminary fucking R and D and shit, you know, to, to come out with a knife uh, of this caliber, you know, and, and and the truth is, there's not much that really compares to the the Chris Reed knives in Pinda. I mean, on on paper, you know, if, if for somebody who doesn't really care to isn't that particular, doesn't really care all that much about specific materials, specific aspects, um, maybe. But it's there's nothing com that comparable for me. So uh, right off the bat, like the, number one for me, good uh, good thing about this knife that that is unique to slip joints as far as like this uh, type and build quality go is, is a uh, USA made, you know, USA made is important to me. Not, not, not for any other real good reason, except for, I really would like to keep my money as, as, as close to home as I can. And especially in this day and age, I mean, it's not like, I, I think anybody would be able to say that. It's not like, I don't give a shit personally about like, I'm not like USA, USA. I'm just more like, Hey man, wherever you are, like your home is important. So like, you know, it doesn't, I'm not, so, so it doesn't matter where you're from. If you're from fucking, you know, Germany, then you probably want to be buying German stuff. If you're from Japan, you probably want to be trying to buy Japanese stuff. Just, just, that's just how I feel about stuff. And I've had a lot of fucking idiots be like, well, that's because you're a racist or you're, you know, regionist or whatever it is. And I'm just like, no, dude, that's fucking just not it at all. Like, you're just totally wrong, like way off base. Um, but that's important to me. And that's a big aspect that, that uh, um, yeah, there's other things that, that fall into that category. You know, the Hinder or Slippy, the Medford, uh, whatever their slip joint is, um, which I do want to try one of those out. It seems like a very cool little knife because um, I, I don't mind the slip joint. The one bummer is that the Medford doesn't have, and a lot of other slip joints uh, might not have, is a pocket clip. I like a pocket clip. I don't like shit sitting down in the bottom of my pockets. Um, <clears throat> um, from another uh, good standpoint, the uh, 
the design, the design and build quality of this thing is 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 really is top notch. It's, it may not be for you. Uh, I, I've I've said it before and I'll say it again. I still I don't think. I mean, it's just not a sexy knife, honestly. Even like I don't think that uh, uh, in, the Encosi is a very sexy knife either. But I think it looks a lot better than the Impinda personally. It, it's got just like more updated like lines to it. But um, the design standpoint, what I'm really uh, thinking about when I when I talk about design, it's just little things. The way that the fasteners are implemented, the way that they're used, um, with the you know a female pin um, with a with a male screw threaded into that. You know, I've said it over and over, like a Chicago screw style construction through and through. Two of those in the back, one big one uh, in the pivot. Um, fantastic design. That's a great design. So you don't have screws screwing into the backspacer in this case, which is a spring. Um, and that's stuff that like, you know, a lot of people get by with. It's probably just fine. But Chris Reeve Knives goes the extra mile to, to, in my opinion, do it right. Not only do it right, but do it the best way possible. So from a design standpoint, uh, I think that's huge. Uh, Build quality, obviously, is, uh, you know, I mean, like we've kind of gone over, it's not exactly what we're being told. It's not like exactly what we're being sold, I don't think, personally. I mean, I'm, I don't think, I, I don't think, I, I think it's, it, all of us can agree that Chris Reeve Knives touts being, having the highest level of fit and finish, right? They're not going, oh, you know, we're probably seventh or eighth, you know, in fit and finish. That's not what they say at all. They're like, the best, like not comparable. And, and in the past that has been true. And I would say that um, it's not necessarily the case with this thing, um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna try to stick to good <laughs> for now. Um, the uh, S35VN spring, I think that's really cool to have a heat treated S35VN spring that uh, interfaces with S35VN uh, blade. So that's, that's obviously optimal, you know, if, if you have two, um, of the same material at the same hardness, all that kind of stuff. And that's what's uh, the, um, the friction is all focused on, or, you know, 99% of the friction friction is focused on. Um, that's really good. So that should mean that the, they essentially don't even really wear on each other. So it, it uh, theoretically, um, that's a really, really good thing. It, 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 it looks great too. I mean, obviously the, uh, the, the stone washing on the, you're not going to be able to see it with my dog shit camera, but the stone washing on the back spring matches the blade perfectly. Um, I really like the <clears throat> Chris Reed knives took a departure from the rest of their knives and went with the squared <clears throat> relatively all things considered. It's not spider co squared off, but a squared off um, spine. I think it's cool. <clears throat> Again, it's not really a big thing, but it's fun for somebody who is a Chris Reeve Knives enthusiast, you know, to see uh, a totally uh, different spine. Because even the fixed blades have the, the crown spine. <clears throat> so I really like that. Um, so that's 35 BN spring. I've got that under design and build quality. So I think that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> minimal parts, right? So I've kind of discussed that. A knife that would be uh, comparable to this knife as far as USA made. A lot of the other things that I've <clears throat> mentioned so far would be like the Hinder or Slippy, which has like well over, I would say, twice the amount of parts. <clears throat> so this thing has like very, very, very few parts. And I'm, I'm super attracted to that. I feel like, you know, a one piece fixed blade is going to be your stoutest uh, a, a build of any kind of like edged cutting tool. So the less, the more you can cut down on parts, probably the better off you're going to be. So um, <clears throat> barring no other knife, I don't think, um, I think you got less parts <clears throat> than any other knife that, that Chris Reeve makes at least. Uh, materials, titanium, uh, 6AL Vorfeet uh, 4V titanium, um, S35VN. Um, not only is S35VN my personal favorite steel, but this piece of S35VN has been just out 
fucking standing. And it's kind of funny, like, <clears throat> so when I'm at work, you know, there's, there's a reason why I don't post a lot of like videos and stuff of my work. I'm always doing awesome things. I promise you that. But like, <clears throat> I just can't fucking stop what I'm doing to set up a camera to, to film every little thing that I do. And I, it, it just takes away from my everyday life as well. Like, I just don't like that. Um, but just suffice it to say, like, I, I use the shit out of my, my tools. And, like, uh, this past week I've been doing a, a Timber Tech deck. And so cutting all kinds of strapping, uh, just trimming little edges of the timber tech material, which is like a composite decking material, uh, chamfering things. Uh, I, yeah, I literally just use the shit out of it. Oh, you know, it's my wife and I took, uh, we just moved into this house a few months ago. And so we were going through the gardens and taking some of the, the plants in the, the home homeowners were like, Oh, you know, you got to take these bulbs out and you got to put them in. And anyway, so I was actually just like, fuck it. And I'm like digging around in the roots and stuff and cutting, uh, <clears throat> the plants apart so we can get the root balls uh, separated from each other to, to pot them and put them in the laundry room. And uh, yeah, so I was just like, fuck it, man. Like, I mean, I should be able to do this shit with my everyday carry knife. So I uh, haven't had to sharpen it yet. This, that's their, this knife has been just fantastic. It's not just crazy sharp, but it, but it's great. I, I use it to eat my stuffed bell pepper this evening too. So I cut my stuffed bell pepper up. So I love S35 for VN. Um, another good is the uh, <clears throat> kind of harkens back to my first one, which is USA made um, warranty and customer service. So just by sticking with, you know, your, uh, your home country's uh, manufacturing, you inherently get, you know, theoretically better customer service and warranty service just because you don't have to, I mean, we all know the fucking post office, I mean, I know they're all underworked and overworked and underpaid, but uh, Jesus, you know, it doesn't do it any, it's not any better when you have to ship it to a different country. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, Chris Reeve knives, I, you know, I, I, I've got like my uh, little beefs and stuff with them, uh, obviously, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but they've never really been like, I've never had just like shit service from them or anything like that. It's always been cordial. It's always been, Hey, you know, we're going to make this right within their parameters, which you, which usually is pretty damn straightforward. Um, <clears throat> you would love it for it to be able to say, Hey, my $450 knife, like this shit will never have to be returned. You know, it'd be, it'd be nice if uh, that'd be the case. Let's look at a comment here. Love your videos. Do you have an Instagram? Yeah, I do have an Instagram. My Instagram is Archmang. And so it's A-R-C-H-M-A-N-G. So um, I try to do content on Instagram. Um, I try not to say fuck as much, but there's a lot of fucks on there. I, and it's, it's kind of interesting on that note. I've noticed just through my like working with a lot of subcontractors and all that kind of stuff. Like when I'm at my fucking wits end and I'm just like, no fucks. I got no fucks left, you know, on a job or whatever. I actually have more fucks than most people start off with. <laughs> so, uh, which is kind of interesting. I actually had somebody tell me that the other day. He was like, man, you know, I can tell you're like over it, but like still putting in a lot of time and effort and all this stuff. I'm just like, God, oh, fuck, man. I don't know what else to do. <clears throat> Let's see. Next one question for you. I have S. I have a 25, but on the fence is only a 31 or 21. So for me, the 20, the Sabenza 25 is a, is a no go because it just because of the clip. Um, I had one of the, I had like one of the first 50 uh, Sabenza 25s and I did a review on it. I don't have one. I don't have my large and cozy with me right now, but uh the canted clip, it makes all the difference on the knife. It kind of is a bitch to say that, but there's it, that's a collector's item, you know? So, I mean, there's there's some, in my opinion, kind of foolish person who's not a knife user anyway, so obviously not foolish, but just like this, just wants to buy it for fucking nostalgia standpoint, standpoint which is, I think nostalgia is toxic. It's one of the worst fucking things ever. Um, just remember, like, on that note, 
your past doesn't need you. Your future needs you. You know, so fuck your past and the goat balls. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I would say, I say 31, just because even though the 21, it's like maybe it might be a little bit sexier for like a, a couple of years. I really do believe that uh, that ball lock interface is going to, you know, it's not going to last forever, but it's going to last longer than the 21s titanium on S35 or S30V or fucking BG42 or whatever it is. But uh, <clears throat> that's what I would do. Yeah. I say 31 all the way, man. Honestly, like if I, if I was like not, if I didn't already have a bunch of shit, uh, 21s and all that kind of stuff, I would say 31 all the way, just cause I'm not a collector's person and I don't want to treat my fucking everyday carry knife. Like it's, you know, a, a special shit. Yeah, I want to treat it with respect and not use it for dumb things. But at the same time, it needs to be a tool, you know. And and fuck, I mean, that's how I enjoy it. Like I can't really enjoy my shit unless I'm using it for what it's intended to be used for. That's just kind of my own goofy fucking aspect of it. And like it, people look at it as an investment, and, and I'm just like, well, f invest in yourself. Invest in your own time on fucking planet Earth, you know. Get your hands dirty, get your feet dirty, and use your goddamn Chris Reed knife. That's for sure. Um, and definitely don't tell me you have an opinion on it <laughs> if you haven't actually used it for, you know, 15, 30 days, not carried, but used it, you know, sharpened it. Um, <clears throat> another good thing that I would say about the Chris Reed knives and Pinda is there's not really isn't a lot that's comparable to it. Like, you know, I've talked about like the Lion Steel Thrill. Um, just some other modern USA made uh, slip joints like the, was it the 2630 or whatever the ZT is? The Anso designed ZT. Cool little knife. It had a no go on there for me, which was just a really small diameter ring of uh, 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 bearings in the pivot. Well, it's just like, fuck that. I guess there's not enough surface area to, to, to tickle my pickle. Um, but, uh, just all things considered the parameters and, and all of the aspects of, of my interest, um, just everything else just kind of fell by the wayside and, and this came out on top and I, I have no regrets, you know, honestly, like it's, st I still feel like this would and is going to be on top in the, in the slip joint world. Sure. There's fucking, you can buy like a pinion knives, fucking slip joint for $800, but I'm not going to do that, <laughs> you know, and I'm definitely not going to buy any of the, you know, outsourced ones. It's just not my shit, you know? So, oh yeah, the, the I would still carry that 25, man. Absolutely. I mean, fuck it. Why not? Use it. Use it. Love it. Um, the last thing I have that written down, I've just got my like little right in the rain uh, notebook here, which are my favorite notebooks by far. I've got a majillion of them. A majillion. That's a lot. That's smaller than a bajillion, though, I guess. Is is the, the big beefy pivot. I kind of brushed on this last time when I was talking about, fuck, I can't remember what it was, but I was talking about the in, no, the Inkosi and how they took out, so like it's got this big beefy pivot but then they mill out a shit ton of the material on the inside. So now it's just like this hollow shell of a pivot. And it's like, mm, that's a fucking amateur move in my, in my opinion. Why, why have a beefy pivot if you're going to then go in and remove hollow it out? You know, I mean, within reason, but this thing is, these are pretty goddamn hollow. Um, especially like the head part, you know, like I'll just do you like a little diagram. Say, say this is a screw. Oh, it's going to look like a wiener. We're going to just uh, dick screw. Damn, girl. Check out my dick screw. <laughs> so if that's a screw, and then you go and you cut a fucking Allen hole into it like this, didn't you just fuck up the structural integrity of your screw? I mean, so you really, you really got to watch your ass whenever you're designing a screw. And like, so it's not just straightforward. So uh, even the, even the male part, you know, could be fucked because I mean, that thing is, that's the male part. It is seriously deep 
Jeez. And wide. So, I mean, it's like eh, not the best. But the Impinda kind of crushes it as far as like doing a good job um, by going back with the 564. So, whatever it is, the small um, Allen key with a big ass beefy pivot. Uh, so, this is going to be the most, you know, sturdy fucking handle pivot part of, of any fucking Chris Reed knife, right? I mean, it's just just the way it is. It's the biggest fucking pivot to have. And with the least amount of material moved out, uh, taken out of it, with nothing taken out of this side, which is, we know is actually the male side, which is kind of fucked. And I've got that <clears throat> a little bit in the bad. I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it is fucking gayer than two dudes fucking with two dudes filming and two other dudes jacking off which is very gay. So that's okay, though. That's okay. Very interested. Very interested. And suddenly no interest at all. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go to the bad. All right. Uh, the worst thing is, I, I, and I kind of put this in from in order. So in my opinion, the worst bad is that it is not uh, that I can tell better it does not have better fit and finish than any other slip joint that I have and I wish I had brought some out for an example but like just the slip joints that I have is I mean I got like a couple Swiss Army knives I've got a couple like three Spider Co um, Italian made slip joints um, I've got a Boker Actually, the Boker's a lockback, bone-handled lockback, come to think of it. Um, and then just like fucking Leatherman tools and shit like that. And 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 uh, <sighs> this thing's not, I mean, it's like, it's funny too, because when I was talking to one of the employees at Chris Reeve Knives, he was like, no, but you're wrong though. It is better. It is better built. And I'm just like, dude, you can't even tell me what the tolerances are, like not much less like, you know, any kind of conversions from fractions to decimals or whatever. <laughs> I was like, come on, how could you say that? But, uh, <clears throat> which is funny, but, it, but the, but fuck man. I mean, you, you know, you can just, it's just the proof is in the pudding. You know I mean? It, 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 it if, if it, if, if this was that much better with fit and finish, you, it, you should be able to tell, right? I mean, like, especially when you have, a collection of 30 knives and you've had literally fucking 500 pass through your hands. I mean, I think I have some idea, you know, um, I'd be real surprised if, uh, I'm not going to say anything stupid. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that's the number one thing is like that they tout this crazy fit and finish. Um, I've said a lot of good things about this knife, but that fit and finish is just like finished. Yes. F fitment. I mean, it's not spectacular, but it is breaking in rapidly and very well. Like, honestly, I'll th maybe I've just gotten used to it, um, but it 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 feels – I almost poked myself. It feels great. I mean, it's, like, not so shitty and gritty. Um, the, the action's decent with no, you know, blade play – side to side or anything like that obviously uh you know it's a slip joint so there's going to be it just move you can close it um so the up and down blade play doesn't really come into it i guess does it rattle it doesn't rattle oh you know another good thing i didn't write down but i do really really like about this is if you drop it uh, the the there's not there's no detent like a slip joint or a lockback that's one of the things i love about like native fives um, or spider co lockbacks is the fucking closed detent is world class, you know. No, no uh, uh, liner lock or or uh, frame lock or anything that uses uh, a ball detent is gonna have anything close to a slip joint or a lockback. So the detent is phenomenal. I mean, you you guys all know, <clears throat> you drop a knife and it fucking opens right up and you know you never know what's going to happen in that case um so that's that's really good you know from a safety standpoint um just in just in every way okay back to the bad though um and again though I, i've got you know you can see it's actually comparable size here with good and bad 
But in my opinion, the good way, way outweighs the bad with this knife. It's just kind of like, ah, oh, fuck, man. Just is what it is. Um, this uh, this cam pivot action, you know how they say like it's supposed to be easier to open than it is to close? And it's like they even give like some kind of number too. It's like, you know, a, a bunch more pounds, uh, you know, until and then to a certain area and then like all this. I mean, I fucking promise you, like, if that does anything, it's damn near nothing. Like, I mean, it maybe it's like it's a little bit easier after you defeat it to a certain point. Like, but I just can't say that I notice anything. And like, I, I hold it up against my other knives, and the only other thing that they have that makes it feel different is they'll have like a half stop. I don't give a shit about the half stop. I just couldn't care less. I don't, I'm not a traditional knife guy. If anything, I would get more modern slip joints. Oh shit, there's a bunch more comments. Um, how long would you say it takes for a small Sabenza 21 to break in to be able to thumb, stud, flip, open, suffering from <laughs> Sabenza thumb? Uh, I just don't flick them. You know, so I don't really know. I, I the Encosis, um, I might uh, do do like a Spidey flick with, but I, I don't. For some reason, I just don't really have a desire to flick them. So I, mm, I can't answer that question. Somebody asked the other day on the uh, Chris Reeve Knives Facebook, like, how do you get? How can I get my Encosi uh, to flick open? And I said. Best way to do that is turn your Nkosi into cash and buy a Shirogorov, <laughs> which I think is true. That's the best way to do it. But uh, twenty-five micarta Facebook for three twenty-five. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good deal. That's a fucking five hundred and fifty dollar knife. <clears throat> Poor man's Nkosi. <clears throat> All right, so uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna go back to the the bad here. Um, yeah, the cam pivot. Mm, I don't fucking know. I, I I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't see how it would be worth it at all. But <clears throat> it, it, I don't notice anything. Can't, I think I think that is a marketing bunch of bullshit. To be honest, I'm sure that it maybe does something I, in a perfect world, but it's not a perfect knife. So it's it's not it doesn't do anything on this knife. <clears throat> um, the pocket clip. I, I would put that as a good and a bad. I really do like, it's probably my favorite looking of any of the Chris Reeve Knives clips. But, and that's, that's, that's a bold statement because I would say for me, this, the regular standard issue, uh, Chris Reeve Knives pocket clip is my favorite clip for by far out of any knife ever. Um, I just love it. You can even see like the, um, <clears throat> What is this? God damn it. The Ultra, Ultra Tech. They actually even copied the, the, the clip design pretty, pretty completely, <laughs> actually. Um, and then Chris Reeve Knives actually sells those clips to other people, too. Um, you'll see them on the occasional. What, do you, what have I seen them on? I don't know. But you'll see them on some knives uh, out there. Um, but I say the clip is not amazing because and this is really fucking cut and dry, too. Like, I don't understand, like, how. Uh, you know, it's like the uh, millet clip or whatever. It's just like, did they not test it at all? Like, did they have that much invested in the in the final product that they were just like, it's the Pinto fucking, we're just like, fuck it, it's worth it. Just just get them out, you know? But like this, uh, this, just how steep the, uh, <clears throat> it, it has a really small pinch point where it actually touches the scale here and just how steep the ramps, ramp up and ramp down are on it is just a it's a no-go this thing like rips fabric chunks of fabric off of my pocket <laughs> like i mean like it's crazy uh the only the saving grace to it is you know because the clip is completely flat you don't actually feel like anything like on the regular clip here you can see i'll give you the, the old forehead background um it ramps up you know so you actually have like kind of a hot spot there you know uh where like <clears throat> a milled clip 
there's no hot spot because it's completely flat, you know. So your hand just, yeah, it's just flat. Uh, so so I, I so I do like it in use. Um, you just have to try not to fucking take it out of your pocket to play with it too much or anything like that. Jesus Christ, that's what my mommy told me. Um, but uh, yeah, that's an amateur design, and, and it's not like they're like, well, we had to because of there's a like. No, <laughs> all you have to do is make it so the ramp, you know, that it ramps in there not, at not such a tight angle. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's a way around like making the tension less tight, like how just like a sp regular sprung bent clip, you can kind of really dial it in. Um, I've tried to play with this one a little bit, but I'm not going to fuck with it too much more. But yeah, so even more ideal is, is like a clip like this. Super fucking like gradual slope on it. So it goes in and out of the pocket, even though it has a shit ton of tension on there, um, it doesn't fuck your pocket up as much. So that's really important. Like the, the here's another great clip. There you go. So just that, that that's what it's all about. I mean, we're not talking about fucking rocket science here. Like literally just... You can't have this crazy angle on the on the clip part that pinches the fabric, you know. So clip's not amazing. Um, another bad here is washer holes. This has the 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 Impedat uses two of the larger washers that are found on the Sabinzas. So both sides are the larger washer, you know, the, the perforated perforation holes. I mean. I'll just say those are ridiculous. I mean, that's a fucking just bullshit sales pitch, and 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 they're just so far into the the the, the full of shitness that they 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 just can't undo the fucking holes now because they, <laughs> well, you know that wasn't a great idea. Sorry. I mean, it's, it. I don't believe that Chris Reeve, the man, <clears throat> ever thought that they were a good idea. I think he was just kind of like, oh fuck, we got to do something new. So that. It's what he did, you know. He, I think he thought that, you know, that the the fucking uh, ball bearing pivots were the fucking ray all the rage. So updated. Oh, it's not just a. This isn't just a phosphor bronze pivot. It's got fucking holes in it. It's great, <laughs> you know. Like, so it's fucking bullshit is what it is, and it's and it collects grime and fucking moisture and everything else. It does not do anything that it's supposed to do as far as like, oh, it holds extra grease. That's horse shit, you know? Like, phosphor bronze is a self-lubricating material anyway, so, like, you don't even, you don't need lubrication on the washer. You only need lubrication on the ball, the track where the ball rides or anything else, the real high friction points, you know? Um, <clears throat> uh, putting grease or, or oil on the, Phosphor bronze washer is, I don't know. I guess it does make action a little bit slicker, but it's just a fucking silly thing anyway. Like people need to realize that the influence, people have influenced them to desire like a slippery uh, pivot is just like, you just bought that shit, man. Like it's not a fact, you know, like that's desiring that is just a, it is learned. It's not something that for any reason you went, Oh, I like the slippery pivot, you know, like uh, it's fucking silly. Uh, and that's my opinion. Anyway, I know that people think they like it and, and that's, that's, that's fucking most things, you know, food, you know, it's subjective, but, um, let's see here. Oh, the pivot, the fucking backwards pivot. I am, you know, I was trying to think when I wrote this down, I was like, why the fuck? Why did they make it so the the part of the of the pivot that has the actual screw head in it is female? Like, what the fuck is the point of that? Because you guys know to take this fucking thing apart, you know, you you, you do have a shouldered shouldered. You have a locating um, type of of a, a pivot here, right? So like. When you stick the Allen Allen key in this side and turn, this side doesn't turn because it's D shaped, right? So it's asymmetrical, and so you can kind of back this out. But what's weird is 
you don't want to back it out too far because it's the female side. So you actually have to back it out some way, then shove it back in, and then unscrew the male side that has no fucking screw hole or head type on it or anything. So I can't think of a good fucking reason why they would have done that. It's definitely not helpful. There's nothing cool about it. Um, and it just is a gimmicky fucking thing to do. Let's see. A little, a little bit of the devil's lettuce, boy. Uh, sure, fuck yeah, of course. Um, uh, not a whole lot. I'm more of like an edibles kind of guy myself, but I haven't rocked any guns today, and I was doing yard work all fucking day too, which is an amateur move. Definitely got to rock the guns for yard work. Yeah, but if I'm doing something like, I'm usually always doing something, but if I'm doing something that involves like counting or fucking memory or <laughs> measuring or anything like that, not so much. But yeah, this is the upslope. Upslope is the shit. They, they kind of have a generic or generic or more generic looking can, um, but upslope is, is the shit. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> a little ganja for sharpening. That sounds like a pro move too. Yeah, I find that like if I'm gonna clean the house or whatever, I I I like fucking care more if I'm like fucking rock the little and then clean the house. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, the backwards pivot, I would say it's not a good thing, right? I mean, it's like, yeah, it's a silly fucking thing for them to do. <clears throat> I would say there's not a great. You know, it's fucked up, man. It's like there's no reason to take this damn knife apart except for those goddamn holes in the washers. You know, like, otherwise, there's there's no nook or cranny that you can't get to to clean. So, I mean, and there, if it didn't have holes in the washers, nothing could get in the holes in the washers. So, like, you wouldn't, whoops, sorry about that, everybody. That was probably loud. Um, yeah, so the hot holes in the washers, I will say it over and over and over and over again. It's a fucking not a good thing. So, and this knife's no different. So, it, is, it deserves to be in there. <clears throat> again, though, I'll say again, the good outweighs the bad, even though I'm going to harp on the bad things, um, just because it's 2020, God damn it, and that's what we're fucking doing. So, <laughs> uh, the design, all right, the design is subjective, obviously, and I kind of brushed on as far as, like, the implementation of fasteners, um, how things fit together, but all that is wonderful, and that's a good thing for sure. But I, I'm, I, I've never been able to change my mind on this. Like from day one when Chris, we heard, oh, my God, Chris Reeves coming out with a modern slip joint. I was like, oh, shit, it's going to be a Gerber from 1991. You know, like, I mean, that's what this knife looks like. It is. I mean, I just can't believe this is uh, Chris Reeve Knives' newest design folding knife. It is so ugly. <laughs> like, I just, I can't believe it. But that being said, it's subjective. I know there are some people who are just like, what are you talking about? Sabinzas are ugly. Like, this is fucking really cool. Um, I, sure. You know, but I think they could have done... I. It, you know, they could have made it like rect just a rectangle like this. Gerber, totally. But I mean, they, it could have been anything other than this thing, you know, and uh, and been just great. But that being said, it's fantastic in the hand. Like, I mean, th this is, um, it easily is is uh, Chris Reeve Knives' most comfortable in hand knife. So, I mean, that's a... That's, uh, that's important. Um, <clears throat> I mean, compared to like this thing, this thing feels like you're holding a fucking chunk of broken ashtray in comparison, which is not comfortable. Um, <clears throat> but this thing, it feels just so great. And I will say this too, the, um, the full backspacer is clutch. Like, I mean, just the fact that it's, it's a, uh, it just kind of creates a, 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 a a surface that's comfortable right you don't have like this open shit where like your finger fat kind of meet of your hand like just doing that i can feel like my fingers kind of 
pressing down into that little void there and it's not that comfortable so like using this knife i've <laughs> taken down a bunch of cardboard with it just to fucking do it um i don't normally do that too much but uh um it's extremely comfortable to use so i mean this is a it's a fantastic edc um <clears throat> Yeah, I can't say good enough good things about just how comfortable the knife is um, in use. <clears throat> Next thing I've got on the bat is the nail nick. I think the nail nick is a fucking incredibly missed opportunity. Again, like they had to go to, they had to just go 1991 with it, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know what the deal is with this nail nick. I, I don't like anything about the nail nick. First off, it's not fucking usable. Who the fuck, who's goddamn has incredible Hulk fingernails? I mean, Jesus, nobody uses a nail nick on this fucking knife. Nobody, there's no way. Cause I mean, it takes fucking 30 pounds of fucking, it, it, it's, I mean, this thing's like a bear trap. You know, it's, it's the, I don't see how you could use your fingernail to open this. Why would you? You just pinch it and open it. So, I mean, I don't know what why they chose to do this the little fucking crescent moon shit shape and then it's it's at a weird angle like i mean i don't know if you can see that but it looks like a fuck up you know it looks like it looks like they didn't give a shit like just like oh just put a fucking little fingernail uh, handle on there just just you know, and, and like fucking they just bang it out like i just it's so, so tragic that that's what they did they could have done a cool like waterfall nail nick. They could have done anything. I mean, uh, they definitely should have done like an ambidextrous one. So what? Something the same on the other side. I think. I mean, fuck, why not? Well, we can't. We can't just spend all our hard-earned time and effort on this four hundred and fifty dollar knife. But I just feel like that's a huge missed opportunity. It, 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 the fucking, this nail nick is, does nothing. I mean, I guess it offers a little bit of extra friction for when you're our pinch, opening it with a pinch, but I'm just barely. I mean, yeah. So I think that's a majorly missed opportunity. I don't know exactly what they could have done differently. Like I said, just anything, you know, would, would be better, I think. I don't think it'd be a good idea to do nothing. Because it, it, I'm sure it definitely offers a little bit of extra friction for you to be able to pinch it open. And maybe that's all they fucking cared about. But yeah, there's nothing about the nail nick that I like on this knife other than it's part of what this knife is and the good outweighs the bad. You know, that's basically all I can say about it. Um, but, but a missed opportunity, in my opinion, to, to do something modern on this knife other than just the materials, you know materials and the design you know i mean making this knife in 1991 would have been a lot more difficult <clears throat> if not even maybe not possible you know um and then the last thing that i've gotten the bad is uh just it's a slip joint you know it it uh there's been a lot of times i'm i'm super duper used to um with me just at least in in my you know everyday outdoors person life in my working life and my just being a knife user life um i'm so used to like holding this item opening the knife with one hand you you know dealing with whatever it is i'm doing putting the knife away and <laughs> i'm almost every single time i've gone to use this knife i literally am like fuck i gotta put this thing down open the fucking knife. and i i'll get frustrated you know depending on what it is i'm doing i'm like i oh, gotta do this now i have to put this down close it um sometimes i'll do the old thigh close but um i i i kind of like the act of doing it just like this you know kind of just methodically closing it in the same way every time um it it <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't cut the fuck out of myself with this thing or not. My wife will not even open this knife. She's like, hell no, I'm going to cut the shit out of myself with that thing because it's hard to open. I mean, and so, so like every time she's just like, nope, 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 nope. You open this, you close it. Um, you got to just want it. You got to definitely just, just do it and want it. <clears throat> um, 
So it, like, like, like I said before talking about this knife, like I thought some of my other knives were like bear traps, but this thing is just like nuts so with how, how strong the, the back spring is. And, and again, that could be a good thing. All things considered. Uh, I have found myself using this in like an all type of method and being like, Oh shit, that's right. It doesn't, this knife doesn't lock arch, you know, like, so be careful, which we all know we're supposed to always treat knives like that. But sometimes, sometimes you just forget or I just forget, but <clears throat> so that's kind of it, you know, it's like a, the, a, I just kind of wanted to do like a, uh, wholesome you know overview on this knife and just kind of go over like my findings what i found to be good what i found to be bad how the knife has been breaking in um it's been good uh i, I will say also like i do is the <clears throat> out of all the bad that i listed even the um you know doesn't actually have better fit and finish than you know other decent slip joints um, the number one bad for me still is that it just that it is a slip joint, you know? So it's like, it's there. You got to remember, or I have to remember that, that I got, have to have both hands to be able to do it. So I think that's a missed opportunity too. Cause like Spyderco has slip joints that you can easily open, not easily, but you can train yourself to open one handed and, and feel pretty confident doing it. Too. so um <clears throat> this one i mean i feel not super confident even closing it one-handed but uh that's neither here nor there but everything else it really hits the it really hits the mark on like i love the i love the materials i love the design as far as like the way the fasteners are implemented into the thing how it all goes together um the s35 vn back spring the full, the fact that it is a full backspacer, um, all that stuff is just a, is is great. The com the in hand comfort, the just everything. I mean, it, it, it uh, the uh, for me this knife is a keeper for sure. Uh, I like the size, like it, it is. Uh, it's not really fair because this is a uh, small and cozy, which I think is just kind of silly small all things considered but um the size of it is great it it uh it's like three and a quarter inches of of blade length it's just it's just perfect it really hits a, a perfect little um uh, blade size for me <clears throat> i mean this this knife is going to be a keeper for me for sure like i mean this this definitely is a keeper uh i uh i know that it's not perfect um, but I, but I don't have a knife that is perfect, but I, I just, I have a really good feeling about it. Like just wear, uh, wearing in, wearing out, you know, longevity of just all of it. Um, I have a really good feeling that this knife is, is, uh, one of the better, all things considered designed Chris Reeve knives. I mean, it's, it really has a lot going for it. I guess that's where I'll leave us boys and girls um yeah it's a cool knife i think next the next the next uh, uh uh video that i'm gonna do is probably gonna be because i've also been carrying this knife every day um hasn't seen just a shit ton of use just only just kind of like stuff that i like I, I know is not gonna gunk up the blade um i have dropped it on asphalt and it's, it's got a couple little bobos on it um unfortunately but uh, um, yeah, still really loving the the Ultratech. It is a, a cool fucking knife, man. Honestly, I'm like, I don't know if you guys follow Microtech or not on Instagram and, and whatnot, but like, it, it's once you have one of these little OTFs, like it's now I'm just like, oh shit, they have a they have a comp a little compact Trodon now. That's like a California legal uh, or Chicago legal or something like that uh, Trodon that is fucking cool as shit looking um <clears throat> and just other little things like that but anyway so that'll be it um for the next video i guess um but until then guys pala bra to madre and uh questions comments concerns smart remarks 
leave that down at the bottom. I appreciate it. And you guys have a great rest of your day.